one called Winter Day, a little girl and her father arrived in London. Sarah Crewe was seven years old and she had long black hair and green eyes. She sat in the cab next to her father and looked out of the window at the tall houses and the dark sky. What are you thinking about, Sarah? Mr. Crewe asked. You are very quiet. He put his arm round his daughter. I'm thinking about our house in India, said Sarah, and the hot sun and the blue sky. I don't think I like England very much, father. Yes, it is very different from India, her father said. But you must go to school in London, and I must go back to India and work. Yes, father, I know, said Sarah, but I want to be with you. Please come to school with me. I can help you with your lessons. Mr. Crewe smiled, but he was not happy. He loved his little Sarah very much, and he did not want to be without her. Sarah's mother was dead, and Sarah was his only child. Father and daughter were very good friends. Soon they arrived at Miss Minchin's school for girls and went into the big house. Miss Minchin was a tall woman in a black dress. She looked at Sarah and then gave a very big smile. What a beautiful child, she said to Mr. Crewe. Sarah stood quietly and watched Miss Minchin. Why does she say that? She thought. I am not beautiful, so why does she say it? Sarah was not beautiful, but her father was rich, and Miss Minchin liked girls with rich fathers because it was good for the school and good for Miss Minchin too. Sarah is a good girl. Mr. Crewe said to Miss Minchin, Her mother was French, so she speaks French well. She loves books, and she reads all the time. But she must play with the other girls and make new friends too. Of course, said Miss Minchin. She smiled again. Sarah is going to be very happy here, Mr. Crewe. Mr. Crewe stayed in London for a week. He and Sarah went to the shops and he bought many beautiful expensive dresses for his daughter. He bought books and flowers for her room and a big doll with beautiful dresses too. Miss Minchin smiled but she said to her sister Emila, all that money on dresses for a child of seven? She looks like a little princess, not a schoolgirl. When Mr. Crewe left London, he was very sad. Sarah was very sad too, but she did not cry. She sat in her room and thought about her father on the ship back to India. Father wants me to be happy. She said to her new doll, I love him very much and I want to be a good daughter, so I must be happy. It was a very big and very beautiful doll, but of course it could not answer. Sarah soon made new friends in the school. Some little rich girls are not very nice children. They think they are important because they have money and lots of expensive things. But Sarah was different. She liked beautiful dresses and dolls, but she was more interested in people and books and telling stories. 
She was very good at telling stories. She was a clever child, and the other girls loved to listen to her. The stories were all about kings and queens and princesses and wonderful countries across the sea. How do you think of all those things? asked her best friend Nancy. I have all these pictures in my head, said Sarah, so it's easy to tell stories about them. Poor Nancy was not clever. She could never remember any of her school lessons. Aunt Miss Minchin was always angry with her. Sarah often helped Nancy with her lessons. Listen, Nancy, she said, you remember that French king, Louis XVI, well, this is a story about him, a one day in 1792. And so Nancy learned her lessons through Sarah's stories, and she loved her friend very much. But not everybody was Sarah's friend. Lavinia was an older girl. Before Sarah came, Lavinia was the richest and the most important girl in the school. But Sarah's father was richer than Lavinia's father. So now, Sarah was more important than Lavinia, and Lavinia did not like that. Oh, Sarah is so clever. Lavinia often said, Sarah is so good at French. Her dresses are so beautiful, and she can sing so well, and she is so rich. Of course, Miss Minchin likes her best. Sarah did not answer when Lavinia said these things. Sometimes it was not easy, but Sarah was a kind, friendly girl, and she did not like to be angry with anyone. And so three years went by, Sarah's father wrote to her often, and Sarah wrote loving little letters back to him. One day, a very exciting letter arrived. Everybody in the school talked about it for days. My friend, wrote Mr. Crew, has some mines in northern India, and a month ago, his workers found diamonds there. There are thousands of diamonds in these mines but it is expensive work to get them out my friend needs my help so little missus this was mr crew's special name for sarah i am putting all my money into my friend's diamond mines and one day you and i are going to be very rich sarah was not interested in money but a story about diamond mines in India was exciting. Nearly everybody was very pleased for Sarah, but not Lavinia, of course. Ha, huh, she said, my mother has a diamond. Lots of people have diamonds. What's so interesting about diamond mines? But there are thousands of diamonds in these mines, said Nancy. Perhaps millions of them. Lavinia laughed. Is Sarah going to wear diamonds in her hair at breakfast, then, or is it a princess? Sarah's face went red. She looked at Lavinia angrily, but said quietly, Some people call me princess. I know that, but princesses don't get angry or say unkind things, so I am not going to say anything to you, Lavinia. To me... You are a princess, Nancy, said to Sarah later, and you always look like a princess in your beautiful dresses. My mother has a diamond. Sarah was a princess to another girl, to this was Becky. She was a servant in Miss Minchin's school, and she was only 14 years old. But she worked all day and sometimes half the night. She carried things upstairs and downstairs. She cleaned the floors. She made the fires. And she was always tired and hungry and dirty. She and Sarah had very different lives. But one day Sarah came into her bedroom and there was Picky sleeping in a chair. Oh, you poor thing, Sarah said. Then Picky opened her eyes and saw Sarah. 
She got up at once. Oh, miss, she said. I'm very sorry, miss. I just sat down for a minute and... Don't be afraid, said Sarah. She gave Becky a friendly smile. You were tired, that's all. Are you? Are you going to tell Miss Minchin? Asked Becky. She began to move to the door. Of course not, said Sarah. Please don't run away. Sit down again for a minute. You look so tired. Oh, miss, I can't, Becky said. You're very kind, miss, but Miss Minchin. Please, said Sarah. She took Becky's hand. You're only a little girl like me. Let's be friends.